Yo, what's good, you too? This is Jay from TNJ. And make sure you hit that like button. This episode is my favorite episode of the season, mainly because we go deep into these franchises with these type of episodes where we get to see beyond just the gameplay and see how these franchises are constructed based on these draft classes and man these guys in the madden community definitely do a lot of work with draft class but first let's just stop the brakes real quick pump the brakes let's just upgrade some of these players first so starting with jj marble i mean look at him he's 85 overall superstar trait remember we drafted him in the sixth round and got a superstar trait guy he's at 85 overall I mean, just tearing it up. We're going to look at the stats a little bit later in this episode, but looking at him, we're going to update, upgrade that speed rusher. I do want to get him uh, higher with rushing the passer, even though he's already a beast. I want to make him into the best pass rusher in football. So he goes up plus two play recognition, which I do appreciate because his play recognition is one of the low spots in his ratings. So up to a 77, uh, he's a monster coming around the edge and then speaking of a monster coming around the edge matt edwards is the next upgrade he's pretty much taken uh the position of that rushing edge that we had uh there for ryan kerrigan for years and he's definitely a washington redskin legend don't get it twisted but here's the thing matt edwards is ready he's already had multiple sack games and he's ready for prime time so looking at patty fisher he was our first round pick from northwestern he's only 21 years old so he's got plenty of time to grow being uh you know a 21 year old middle linebacker we definitely use our linebackers to the fullest and that's one thing i like about this defense i mean all the linebackers do touch the field and they are growing together especially since we have a, a really young linebacking crew but speaking of you know some young guys on the team Connor Stevens is a guy that hasn't gotten a lot of burn but I'm definitely going to change that going forward plus four awareness on that upgrade so he's ready I, I think he's ready he's only at 55 awareness he definitely needs to get that up but I think that he's ready for coverage he's a special teams guy but speaking of young guys that really haven't lived up to the hype at all Tyshawn Woodley was a guy we drafted in the first round two years ago and he's 97 speed but that's all he really has to hang on he's got 85 zone which is pretty good i gotta admit he's pretty good but besides that he's a good tackler so he does play on special teams quite a bit but you know he just hasn't made too many plays and i do I, I am pondering the possibility of trading him even though we did draft him in the first round he does need to upgrade a little bit in his uh play recognition and awareness kind of low but uh we'll see going forward so before looking at this year's draft class, I mean, this is a big year for us because Brandon Sheriff's going to be a free agent. Trent Williams, look at all of these guys that are going to be free agents after this season. It's a long, long list. All of the right guys <laughs> that are, mo are moving on from our team come next season. I mean, these are all starters pretty much, except for like the last three here, last four. But look at Fabian Morrow. I definitely want to lock him up. I think he is proven and he's going to be uh, on our team for a while. But looking at the other guys, Dustin Hopkins, he's pretty good. I, I do want to re-sign him. He's only 76 overall. That's pretty surprising. But looking at the rest of the guys here, I mean, these are crucial parts of our squad. Zach Brown is going to be a free agent. Tony Lippett. I mean, maybe even moving on from most of these guys could be the move because we want to kind of make our build our team through the draft while still you know remaining young and uh we don't want to have too many older guys starting at each position i think out of all these defensive guys that are here in free agency market that i do want to keep i would probably say out of the older guys i mean zach brown's probably it i mean he's been pretty consistent i don't i don't think i'd give him a three-year deal that's what they're asking for but that's probably it to be honest josh norman's 85 speed he's definitely losing there so we're gonna have to draft at safety and then wayne gallman's gonna be a free agent i don't know if i want to keep him either so we're gonna have some interesting uh questions going into next season we can start negotiating with some of these guys later in the season but just to keep this in the back of the mind who do you guys think i should uh re-sign especially with these two uh big time offensive lineman here trent williams is going to be a free agent I, I probably want to keep one of these guys i don't know who should i keep or should i just resign both of them and then everybody else if i resign both of them to contracts i won't have enough cap room to sign the rest of these guys but let me know what you guys think 
So I want to take a look at the stat leaders for our team so far through three games just to show you, you know, the measurement of what I'm, you know, using to kind of scout and evaluate some of the guys going up in the draft class. But Matt Edwards and J.J. Marble are easily the best two players on our defense right now. Six sacks and five sacks, respectively. I mean, they are just tearing it up. And after that, nothing. I mean, DJ Swanger has a sack on a blitz. But besides that, our defensive linemen aren't doing anything in the pass rushing game. And you look at a guy like Jonathan Allen, I think this is a position that we're going to have to go after his defensive end. And this might be the year where I actually trade up in the draft and get one of these top guys because we haven't had a top pick in this uh, franchise at all. So maybe even moving up to select some of these guys is the move this season. Looking at the interception leaders, we're doing pretty decent, but you know, no cornerbacks have more than one interception. Uh, both our safeties have one each. So we're going to have to address some issues there. And on the receiving end, I think this is our bright spot because we have our guys locked up. Jameson Crowder, Paul Richardson, Mike Perkins is good. Um, and also Marquise Brown, Hollywood Brown is still there. We probably want to pick up one more guy just for depth, but definitely won't be at the top of the draft because we're pretty much set up in a good way uh, on the receiving end. Rushing the ball, I think we're pretty good too. Darius Geis is still locked up. I think he's definitely our future, I think, because I was considering trading him, but you know, having another running back to share the load with him has definitely helped his uh, injury, uh, the way he was getting injury at, the rate he was getting injured at, and Wayne Gallman is definitely a pretty good compliment to Geis. And like I said, it doesn't matter who starts. I think they're both going to get their touches, and they're pretty good. They both had three touchdowns apiece. Chris Thompson we brought back on a one-year deal, and then throwing the ball, obviously, Tyree Jackson, three touchdowns, three interceptions. He's just getting his feet wet. Don't worry about the stats right now. He's going to get better. So for, for those of you guys who aren't familiar with Raiders Forever and CW Saps draft classes, they're unique. Let me let me give you an example. So Tyshawn Woodley, I drafted him in the first round. You can see on the screen uh, the draft file that I'm using. I'm using their second class. I used their first class the first year, using their second class this year. But just to give you an example, Tyshawn Woodley, let's just look at Tyshawn Woodley. And this is the variety and this is the depth that this draft class has. If you look at Tyshawn Woodley, he is a he's kind of a questionable guy i mean if you think about it you look at his ratings he is 97 speed but he was projected as a first rounder strictly off of potential because he's good in zone great in speed but look at these ratings at man 57 man 53 play recognition 50 awareness i mean that just shows the uh you know just the randomness and just you know the realism because remember think about it in real life a guy like cordero patterson for example he was a first round pick, but he just never put it all together at receiver. And he's kind of one of those guys they drafted off potential too. He had the speed. He just never had the route running, things like that. But then you look at a guy like JJ Marble, somebody I drafted late in the sixth round and look at him. He's a monster. I mean, that's just a variety that happens in the NFL that, you know, not every first rounder is going to pop and not every uh, late round pick is just a flyer. Some of these guys end up being really, really good. So looking at this draft class, let's hop in into this right now and like I said our focus is going to be on some of these positions where we have aging guys but one position I do want to look at is running back so remember these draft classes do have a full scouting report and it's it's pretty detailed we are going to show a, a couple of clips from those and uh you'll see some scouting reports flash across the screen throughout this scouting session so first let's look at running back you know i'm not thinking i'm gonna get a first round running back but i want to get kind of a uh, running back in probably like the second third fourth round you never know what i'll trade up to get but first i want to look at a guy I need a receiving back, Jarrah Griffin. So here's his scouting report, ultimate return man. He's an ultimate third down back. Darren Sproles like 8.0 yards per carry. So he's definitely a guy that I want to look at here. So let's fully scout him. Let's uh, scout his rating. So he does come at B plus elusiveness, B juke move and B minus carrying. So that's pretty good coming out of USC. And then the next guy I want to look at is Kareem Randolph. So Kareem Randolph doesn't have the return ability like Griffin, but you know, he's pretty good. He's a four year starter and I do like him. And let's just see what he's at. B plus carrying, B elusiveness and B spin movies, a mid third rounder. 
and I want to look at one more late guy here. So now looking in the late rounds, looking at a guy, Timothy Elmore. So this guy is a small school guy from Charlotte, but he's literally the only running back to crack 2,000 yards on the ground last year. So he's definitely a guy to keep your eye on late in the draft. We're looking at him in the sixth round, it says his projection is. So if he's there in the sixth round, I think I might take him. So I wanted to look at receiver as well. Like I said, we're looking kind of in the uh, late rounds for receiver because we're pretty much set at receiver. But I want to get some good depth. And the first person I'm going to look at is Casey Marino. He's a sure-handed guy at Ohio State. We're not going to uh, fully scout him here because I want to save these points for defense. But looking at his scouting report, it says he's as sure-handed as it gets. So we want to keep our eyes on him. The next guy is Nigel Reed and i want to look at his scouting report it says that we might need to start looking at lsu as a wide receiver university because this guy might be one of the top 100 in this class and looking at him let's add him to the board i don't want to scout him either so these two i'm going to add to the board and scout later i don't want to use all the points this week just for this episode so the last receiver i do want to look at i always want to look at a late round re receiver is dominic Courtney and this guy actually has played because of playing time you see he's 6'5 214 so I definitely like the potential here uh, looking at his scouting report here it looks like he played due to injury but it wouldn't shock this scout if he ended up being the most successful out of the three other LSU receivers so we definitely want to keep him on the board here at 6'5 214 so now we move over to the tight end position and I think this is one of the positions where I do want to draft high because we do have a question mark at tight end. We have two undrafted guys. I don't know how good they're going to be, but let's just look at these guys starting with Amon Branch. So we're going to show his full scouting report. Remember these first round prospects usually have the full scouting report. Just check out the whole scouting report. I mean, it's over 100 pages. I mean, it's it's amazing. And looking at Amon Branch, let's just take a look, pause the video if you want to read it. But he's 6'6 six, six. I mean he's 6'6 six, six. I mean he's a pretty good tight end he's gonna be a big tight end he, he lacks run blocking uh as a whole but you know he's gonna be a guy that's always gonna be open so I definitely want to keep my eye on him and if he's available in the first round I think I might go after him and mainly because I do need an athletic guy too because Jordan Reed he's athletic and I just noticed when he's out of the game it's different so I'm going to flash the rest of these uh, tight ends here across the board. You see that some of them are true second and third round talents. Um, you can see the scouting reports. If you want to hit pause, go ahead. But a lot of these guys are big. One of the guys that I'm looking at here is Robbie Clements. He's 6'8", and he's athletic. So he's a former power forward as well at Rutgers. At Rutgers. But I definitely want to keep my eyes on this guy too, Robbie Clements. I think he's a guy that maybe we should keep our eye on. So it's kind of boring to look at tackles, but we are going to flash these scouting reports across the screen here. And you can hit pause and uh, kind of, you know, read a little bit of these guys. But I want to get a good tackle. And mainly because, like I said, Trent Williams and both him and Brandon Sheriff are going to be free agents. So I'm going to need another offensive lineman, especially at the tackle position. I don't know if I'm going to move Trent Brown over, but Trent Brown isn't the greatest right tackle. I've kind of found that out. He does give up sacks and kind of quickly as well if you're if he's going up against a good pass rusher he gives up sacks but i do want to keep my eyes on a couple of these guys you can look at the scouting report let me know what you guys think who i should get at tackle i don't know if it's going to be in the first round second round but it's probably going to be within the first three rounds i'm going to get a tackle strictly because these guys are leaving us so here's probably where i'm going to make a living in this draft and i want to get a good defensive end at least one good i'm going to probably draft a couple but let's look at the number one defensive end he's projected to go number three overall troy still and looking at a scouting report he's going to be a good pro he's a great pass rusher he's a sure tackler he's got a fast first step you know this scouting report kind of reminds me of vic beasley he's got a good first step and remember vic beasley actually led the league in sacks i believe that was his second year but he definitely uh this guy he's i got my eye on him i don't know how i'm gonna trade up to get a guy like this but i definitely do want to keep my eyes on him so the second ranked defensive end is uh Dre Dre Sean way and here's the thing you know he's projected to be top 10 but looking at his scouting report here it kind of concerns me with this sentence way probably could have been could have gotten more than 16 sacks 
that he had. He had 16 sacks. That's a lot. And that kind of scares me, though. If, if, if the scout thinks he's going to get more sacks than what he did, that kind of lets me know that his development probably won't be high. I don't think it'll be high, but I definitely do want to keep my eyes on him. If he does drop, maybe I can uh, develop that a little more. So I do want to look at this guy here, Daryl Parker. You look at his uh, scouting report, strictly a speed rusher, seven sacks, but 22 tackles for loss. That that alone lets me know that he's a monster. So looking at his ratings, we did unlock him here. B block shedding, B pursuit, B minus finesse moves. That's pretty good. And he's 21 years old. I'm going to look forward to developing this guy. He's an early second rounder. So there is a chance we might have to trade up to get him so moving down the board here we're gonna look at Devin Johnson another second rounder we want to look at him let's add Daryl Parker to the board looking at Devin Johnson he is a speed rusher but he's a very inconsistent run stopper so we want to keep our eyes on this guy but we do want a guy that's gonna make an impact rushing the passer and even though he's a below average uh run stopper we probably want to give him a look so let's just look at how good he is as a pass rusher he's got beef and us moves kind of the same as daryl parker so he's a little bit better there but i definitely want to keep my eyes on him so probably one of the most intriguing scouting reports here is landon juan from indiana state so he's actually looking at his scouting report the scout likes him a lot he's a small school elite measurable great production so that alone lets me know that this guy might end up being one of the better pass rushers in this class, one of the better defensive ends. So let's just look at what he's got. So we unlock his ratings, B pursuit, B minus block shedding, B minus tackling. He's a mid third rounder. So we might have to look at him as well. So I'm definitely gonna need to address the middle linebacker position. Let's look at the top linebackers, Marcus Chamberlain, uh, Damon Jabby, and I have no idea how to say his name, but he's also up there. But I do need to fill the void here because I don't know, like I said, if I'm going to bring back Zach Brown, if I'm not. But we do have Patty Fisher kind of to fill that role. So he's getting a lot of burn this year. And he, he you can already see last game, he forced a fumble. I mean, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. And he was our first round pick. So I don't want to spend back to back first round picks on middle linebackers. So we're kind of going to look in this area here, the third, fourth, fifth, sixth round guys and remember we found jj marble there we found matt edwards there i think we have a pretty good uh gauge on how good we can draft at linebacker so i'm not gonna reach for a linebacker but you know one guy i do want to look at here is malik johnson let's look at his scouting report super young crazy production production worth a flyer if you have a need at middle linebacker that is right there is enough for me to say hey i'm looking at him in the fifth round if he's there i'm definitely taking him i i trust this scout and i like what i see right there so let's just see let's just see this guy here so anthony wilcher and another small school guy nc a and t and here's a scouting report on him no one has seen much film on him but he put up serious stats in the fcs and you know jj marble i just keep going back to this guy because he was my best uh draft pick so far and he was a six round pick so i want to add him to the board as well i want to see what these small uh school guys can do for us i like the small schools i like uh scouting guys from those guys those schools that they got the biggest chip on their shoulder and i want to see what they can do so cornerback is always the hardest position to draft with these draft classes and i love the challenge because you never know because a guy like Tashawn woodley and uh denzel griffin remember denzel griffin i actually drafted him in the second round he's yet to touch the field i mean he's literally not even touched the field because he's just not he's just not good i mean it's, it's i can't be more blunt than that he's just not good he's got good good attributes but he's just not good enough to touch the field so i definitely want to draft a cornerback and i am looking in the first round i don't know what my first round pick is going to be but let's look at the first round talent here and i don't think i'm going to be up here for these top two guys they're projected to go in the top 15 but now we're looking at the average draft position starting at 16 we're looking at brandon thomas so he is kind of a guy that looking at his scouting report I believe he's a little bit underlooked. I mean, ov overlooked. I mean, if you look at him, he's third in the nation in passes defended, 16th in interceptions. But looking at his scouting report, it says Thomas has excellent play recognition, is one of the best at finding the ball in the air. And that's exactly what I want. But it does give us a warning here. He's not as fast as the other guys. So I probably expect him to be a lower speed guy. 
but looking at him i probably could use him in the slot even and we'll see and this is the exact uh thing that i was talking about with denzel griffin he had the measurables and everything omar mason looks like this type of guy he, he looking at scouting report he's absolutely blazing fast he's got absolute pure speed and he could shut down some of the best receivers in the acc but you know it's it's funny to see that he may have been able to play lazy because of his amazing speed and quickness that kind of scares me because i don't want a guy that's uh gonna kind of dog it on plays he might give up a lot of short routes because he's just trying to keep up with fast receivers and i don't know we'll see i don't know if i'll even take a chance on him so i do want to look at some late i mean not some late some mid-round cornerbacks here and the first one i look up want to look at is raya Dornival. so raya Dornival is kind of a guy that he's kind of the typical quarterback that i like he's only allowed eight catches his senior year only eight and the, <laughs> the scout report says that's just stupid and that's that's a good sign going forward i want to just unlock one uh rating of his a b minus tackling so i know he's a tackling cornerback and that's definitely something you always need but the second guy i want to look at is nate smith so he is older he's 24 years old but looking at his scouting report he is a three-year starter and it's dynamic his defense was dynamic so it says anything you throw at him he'll be able to pick up so i do like that even though he is older i'll i'll probably have to use probably a mid mid pick on him and i mean it's it's good to have these veteran guys you do want guys you want football players so uh you want to draft some of these smart guys as well not just the development uh type of guys so i do want to look at a couple of small school guys you know i like the small school guys starting with this guy jerkar Jarakis McKinley I can't even say that name fifth rounder 6'2 196 his scouting report says he's Richard Sherman Jr. so that lets me know that he he's played receiver he can probably catch the ball a little bit so let's unlock his best rating oh I can't even do that so I have 15 points left or I have 10 points left and it costs 15 so I can't even do that so I want to keep my eye on him I'm probably going to scout him later and then uh one other guy I do want to look at here uh let's just find him here Brian Jefferson here he is so Campbell University is a six rounder and looking at his scouting report he went to Campbell dominated against weaker competition at least that tells me that you know at least when he faces inferior uh competition he's going to at least come up with you know plays and make plays and he doesn't let you know people just bully him around so i do want to look at free safety because josh norman is leaving troy apke is still there so maybe i'll just move uh swearinger to strong safety full time and troy apke to free but i kind of don't want to do that because dj swearinger is such a good sub linebacker so i want to get another safety tyshawn woodley i want to give him some competition as well so unless you're a game changer i probably won't draft a free safety in the first round that's just like one of my one of my rules there i, I drafted tyshawn woodley because the scouting report kind of said that he was like an athletic freak and i'm not gonna make that mistake again but one guy i do want to look at and this guy just reminds me of earl thomas elias peppenheim so if you look at him he's 5'8 204 and that's probably the reason why he reminds me of earl thomas but looking at his scouting report freak of nature but he's 5'8 he's going to have some issues guarding tight ends but good coaches will find a way to utilize his talent despite his height i like that scouting report that is actually one of my best one of my favorite scouting reports so far because that just lets me know that this guy is just going to have some production so let's look at another guy i'm not going to try to pronounce that last name ezekiel at King Bulu, so I, it wasn't that hard actually. So 6'2-213 out of Colorado. Looking at his uh scouting report here, this guy has size and production, seven interceptions. Insane. He does have some work to do. He's a little bit of a project guy. So if he drops to the third round, I might consider him here. But I in the first two rounds, I don't want projects and I want to kind of have the sure bet here. So I'm just going to do a quick rundown of the top prospects here. You can see the rankings. Troy Steele is number three. Um, looking at the rest of these guys, Dallas Stewart is actually the top tight end. I mean, top quarterback. He's going to be really, really good come uh, when he gets drafted. But looking at the rest of our guys uh, that we were looking at, looking at some guys that 
we may even you know trade up for this is our crop of guys you can see uh some of these guys the schools that are coming from look at alabama here fresno state indiana we definitely want to keep our eyes on some of these guys but check out that scouting report i mean it's amazing man just the depth of these classes is just amazing i mean my hat's off to these guys raiders forever and cw sap these guys put together a pretty good uh draft class year in and year out because this is the first year that they're going to be able to do this in madden which is pretty cool but they've been doing this pretty much a, a while i mean I, it, this is amazing work they have three draft classes out right now and they also have modified versions of them so if you have a draft class one year uh they do have i believe it's the first draft class one with jj marble they have a totally different outcome for every other for every player so uh, it, say for example you use the draft class one in one season you could use it again in another season and you would get totally different outcomes so it's pretty cool so that's basically four draft classes that you have and uh, i mean this is pretty cool so i i really encourage you guys to check out those draft classes but that's gonna do it for this episode man like like i said let me know who you guys think looks good in this draft class let me know who you guys think i should re-sign because we have a ton of free agents come next season and that's it hit subscribe hit that like button let me know going forward so stay tuned let's get it let's go